Well, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat All 17 of you who decided to come over. Yeah. Give, give yourselves a hand. Well, today's a great day. Today's uh, Purim. And uh, for you that have never celebrated it, been celebrated now for 2,500 years, so it's been around for a while. And some would say, in the Christian world, you know, it's a Jewish holiday, so we have nothing to do with it. If you really understood the holiday, you would realize that you have everything to do with it. And uh, I wouldn't tell you you have to celebrate it because I think that's perversion. I wouldn't tell you you can't celebrate it because I think that's prevention. But the holiday brings so much glory to God. Why would you not want to? And it's not like some foreign holy day that was for the Jewish people in Israel. I mean, you 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 have to you have to grab hold of this. I know most of you know this because you've been here for a while. You are grafted into the olive tree of Israel. That's what the whole you know after after you realize salvation. That's what all these letters are about. You know, you're part of the Commonwealth of Israel, not the Commonwealth of Sweden. If it was Sweden, we'd be praying for the peace of Stockholm. Do I want peace in Stockholm? Yes. Of course I do. And I want peace for all the Swedes. But you have to understand what you're grafted into. You have to understand that the branches don't support the roots. It's just agriculturally incorrect. And to come against Israel and not stand with the Jewish people is coming against Jesus. And the spirit of anti-Semitism is the spirit of anti-Christ. And I know we've been confused for 2,000 years, but I'm trying to break the confusion. I'm just, I'm just trying to... I don't want you to become Jewish. Biologically, that's not an issue. We're saved by the blood of Yeshua. But we are grafted into the olive tree. We are part of the commonwealth of Israel. Their promises are now our promises. Their patriarchs are our patriarchs. Their covenants are our covenants. Their God is our God. Their Messiah, he, he went by two names. The King of the Jews and the King of Israel. Check the Gospels. Now he becomes our King. Because he did something phenomenal, you know, when the Jewish people thought this was going to be an exclusive Jewish club. They really did. And you can't blame them. You can't blame the disciples because Yeshua told them, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Don't go the way of the Gentile. They just, you know, for that time, they were to seek out the lost Jews first. And then he said, guess what I'm going to do? I'm opening up this thing to the whole entire universe. And but when the middle wall was taken down, it wasn't for the Gentiles to bring the Jews out of their sanctuary and say, you got to do these things. I tell you, they call us legalistic. I got news for you. Most of the stuff in the Christian community is invented by them. I mean, it, not maliciously. Not maliciously. Not from a wicked heart. Not because the evil... Be Listen, my best friends are pastors. And you know I go to their churches and I speak. But there is a revelation that's happening in your day that I'm not bringing forth. God is bringing forth. There's people you know all over the world. We have congregations all over the world. And right now they're listening in India, Samuel and Stephen Yanga. And you know where they got this revelation from? The Lord. They didn't get it from me. And when you ask these guys, like, how did you get this revelation? Were you sitting on a mountain? They would say the same response. It's in the Bible, bro. We just don't read it. We really don't. Be honest. Some of you have been on 30 years and you, you pop into a little devotional three, four times a week. You go to somebody else's Bible study who's going to dictate how you should think. You can be a theologian too. You only need three things. You need the Bible, which you have. You need a decent concordance, which you have access to. And the good old Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit still will reveal things to you. The voice of God will still talk to you if you're willing to listen. And depending on how deep you want to go, that's as deep as God will take you. David said, deep cries out to deep. 
from the very depths of my soul, I want to know you intimately. Whatever it takes, Lord. If I have to go through the fire, I'll go through the fire to get close to you. If I've got to burn, I'll burn to get rid of myself, to become more like you. Whatever it takes, I want you. It's up to you. God's will. God's will and will. So we're going to have a great time celebrating for him. Let's read a song, get into the word, get into some praise, get into some worship, and give God the glory that's due his name. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom do I need to fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? When evildoers assailed me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they stumbled and fell. If an army encamps against me, my heart will not fear. If war breaks out against me, even then I will keep trusting. Just one thing, I have asked the Lord. So many of us have so many things. Maybe if we ask for this thing, we get the other thing. It says, seek the kingdom first and all these things. You don't think your father knows what you need? You think you have to tell him? Just one thing I have asked of the Lord, only this will I seek. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Do you understand this is your promise? This is what David is crying out for? You have this promise signed, sealed, and delivered? The Lord returns and he establishes his kingdom on earth as is in heaven. You get to reside in his house all the days of your eternal life. Everything's going to change then. Everything. And it's unfathomable. It's ineffable. There's no words. The best word artist in the universe can't describe what that day is going to be like. Amen. Just in our vast imagination, we can go, wow, it's going to be greater than I know. That's enough to keep me pushing, to keep me looking. For he will conceal me in his shelter. On the day of trouble, he will hide me in the folds of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Then, you know why I talk about the Lord coming back because that's the only time I'm going to be satisfied. Then, my head will be lifted up above my surrounding folks. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. And I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Listen, Lord, to my voice when I cry. Show favor to me and answer me. My heart said, you seek my face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Please, Lord, don't turn your servant away in anger. For you are my help. Don't abandon me. Don't leave me. God, you're my Savior. Even if my father and mother leaves me, Lord, you will care for me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Don't give me up to the will of my foes. For false witnesses have risen against me. Also those who are breathing violence. If I hadn't believed that I would see our Lord's goodness in the land of the living, put your hope in the Lord. You know, hope is so interesting. We've seen this word thrown around in all circles. Secular and spiritual. The Bible says hope is the anchor to our soul, meaning there's going to be torrents and monsoons and tsunamis in our life. They're unavoidable. Yeshua says they're unavoidable. In this world, he guarantees you'll have tribulation. If you haven't had it yet, you will. If you're in a place of deliverance right now, you know, you'll find yourself back. It's just the way the world is. It's a fallen world. It's spinning out of control. And sometimes you fall 
pray to the debris. It happens. In a construction site, there's debris everywhere. We're being reconstructed. But the interesting thing about hope is we always think hope is good. But if you actually do a word study, hope can be good or hope can be bad. So you can hope positively and expect good things. Or sadly enough, you can hope negatively and expect bad things. So actually hope can be wonderful or it can be horrific depending on the perspective of what you're hoping for. Put your hope in the Lord yes. and be strong and let your heart take courage. Yeah. Yes. I say it again. Put your hope in the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. I always tell you guys, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> I know what you've been through, but I'm telling you, we have been through, through the rain so many times. So many times, so many times, so many times, so many times. You know, in 48 hours, we were told that Brenda probably has a brain aneurysm, and then the next day we learned that she has the most aggressive cancer there is, melanoma. Just once it's a certain depth, it just, and there's no radiation, there's no chemo, there's no interferon, there's no cure. So wait on answer. I'll tell you, before she gets here, I've never seen anybody, anybody get news like that and not flinch. I've never seen anything like it. I've walked with a lot of people through a lot of things. Didn't flinch. Friday morning when they went to have the surgery to cut it out and check it out, she was laughing. I said, how did you laugh? She goes, Greg, God's in control. I said, you know, he's in control. I, I know, but I've got four kids and I've got a lot going on and I don't know if I can preach up here not seeing your face down here. And here in your left, I don't know what's going to be with me. She goes, you'll be fine. Everybody always is. Yes. Somehow, some way, by the grace of God, it always works out. Always yes. I said, well, what, what can I do for you this morning? She goes, I'm going to go get a pedicure. <laughs> I said, before cancer surgery. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor was a sample, a nice Jewish doctor. Did flinch, not one, not even, not even a little. I'll tell you the truth, I never hit a woman in my life. I definitely never hit a friend, but I wanted to stop her. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll wait on the news. We're hoping, expecting a great report. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I think maybe I'm maybe I'm in my own little world here. You know? Maybe I think you guys are, are more perfect than you are. You know, I brag on you like a typical Jewish parent would brag on their kids. You know, no matter what they do. You, know, you get a Jewish father or a Jewish mother, even if the kids in jail, he's the best inmate in the whole. <laughs> but I heard this one little story. You know, Samuel's been going to village to village, and everybody's been praying and fasting in India, thousands of people, and. Uh, Stephen and others. But I heard this one story where this little group of women got together here. This is deep, man. This is deep. And they each prayed for Brenda. When he got to the last one, she said, Father, if Brenda has an anguish, we give it to me. I've lived longer. No greater love than a man laid down his life for his brother. That's deep, man. That's deep. I've heard a lot of prayers. You know what I was telling you last week about don't despise little things and how little things sometimes could. There's a guy in my neighborhood, you know, I talk to everybody, you know me, by now I talk to everybody, everybody, everybody. And I've been talking for years, he had a real rough on me. Older gentleman, real rough, was raised with orphanage and didn't really want much to a God, although he's very conservative, very conservative. This is conservative radio, has conservative political views and on and on, but not much to a God. Well, you know, I talked to him a lot about God, a lot about life, and just shoot the breeze with him. So he's been going to church for about a year now, which is wonderful. And uh, he and his family. And um, he saw me yesterday and he kind of heard a little something. And he said, What would you do if something happened to you in my life? She passed away.
flew with you. I said, you know, I don't know. I really don't know, man. I don't know if I'll, I'll be here. And I've never seen this guy have any emotion. And he grabbed my shoulder, started crying. He said, I would miss you. You, you have no idea the effect you can have on people. Don't despise little things. No, I told you this last week. Everybody wants to hit a grand slam in the World Series. Everybody wants to win a Pulitzer and Academy. This is a worldly influence. They keep pushing us to do big things, make big money, get the big shot, score the big goal. It's not the way it works in God's kingdom. God will take something so small and change life. Just think of the influence you have over people, the impact you can have in one person's life, totally changing their life, snatching them out of the fire, and bringing forth great anointing for generations to come, and changing the whole entire spiritual complexion of the universe. Don't think they need a big ministry. Don't think they need cards and a five million C. You got the juice. Pour it out. You got the juice. If you got it, give it. And if you give it, you'll get more. If you will spill, he will fill. I'm telling you. But if you just want it to keep it to yourself, it's going to be stagnant when the water is into a stack. Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for Purim. I thank you for a time of miracles, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Father, in some way we thank you that there is no cure. That means we've got to go to the great physician. You're our first aid anyway. Yes. Father, we don't, uh, like little boys in the fire, we don't know what you're going to do. Some people do know what you're going to do. I think that's wonderful. They must be sitting up there with you right now. You must be telling them all your plans. For me, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know any plans. I've seen people with no faith that heal. I've seen people with faith that dance in circles around anybody here. Drop dead with you. So I don't question you. I'm with Paul. Who knows the mind of the Lord who dare gives him counsel? Yes. Who have ever given you anything, Father, that you owe us anything? Right. For from you and through you and to you belong all things. Yes. Amen. Amen. All things being equal, Father. <laughs> Keep it around. Yes. 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 Keep right. Yes. I just think you got big plans. Yes. Absolutely. And Father, you know me, I don't, I don't do too good alone, so. Just do your thing. Yes. Great position. Yes. Do your thing. Yes. Either way, Father, you'll get praise from my father. Yes. yes. You're still God, and you're still good. And you still deserve that praise. Father, I ask that you bring down your spirit <coughs> from your throne of grace. Father God, humble us with your tender loving kindness. Draw closer to us today, Father. And let us see your shepana. It glow more in our darkness. As your kindness and your love leads us into repentance. And your <coughs> kindness, as we're humbled in the midst of your great love. That we go, how could you love us so much? How do you love us? How do you love me this much? I am not worthy. But you do. And it's that love, Father, that pure, holy, perfect love that causes us to be humble in your sight. Thank you that you don't embarrass us. Thank you that you don't condemn us. Thank you that you don't lambaste us. It's your incredible love when we can't even love ourselves. Because we know ourselves all too well. And the fact remains that you know us better than we know ourselves. Yes. You know every hair on our head. And you keep every tear in a bottle with our name marked on it. You know every fiber of our being intimately. For it was you who knitted us in the womb of our mother. And in spite of all that knowledge, you still say, kid... I'm crazy about you. Yes, yes. We're not done yet. I got great plans for you. It's in the midst of that truth, Father, that revealed truth, that we are humbled in your sight. Yes. And it's because of that revelation that we can so freely and so willingly worship you today. Yes. So let it be known, Father, you are loved in this yes. place. Yes. You are loved in this place. We don't only need you, we want you. Yes. Yes. There is no obligation here. It's a matter of appreciation and desperation. Yes. 
We are not about principles here. We're about passion. Yes. And Father, it is not about competency because there ain't nobody competent enough to hold a candle to you. It's all about intimacy and we want to know you more. Yes. Father, to know you is to love you. Yes. So Father, please reveal yourself. <laughs> so many here think they know you. Reveal oh, yourself. Know. Reveal yourself today, Father. In a greater dimension. Yes. So we can understand the width and the depth yes, and the Lord. height yes, of your great, yes. great love for your people. Help us to fall more in love with you today. Yes. Father, anoint everybody here Please. with the blessing of your love, yes. the blessing of your grace, your mercy, yes. your goodness, your long suffering, your kindness, Father. Just blow them out of their shoes. Yes. I ask all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.